The Fallen Saber Grandmaster is here again in Destiny 2, and brings with it the return of the pinnacle weapon Loaded Question. The GM is also very quick, easy, free to play, and new player friendly. That doesn't mean it's a walk in the park, there are key areas that can trip up any team. To remedy this, I'll go over key trouble spots of the strike, powerful loadout recommendations that all players have access to, and then walk you through step by step this GM. So let's get started. For the GM modifier specific to the Fallen Saber, you have Arachno, Vandals drop web binds when defeated, Chaff, no radar, 12 Overload and 6 Barrier Champions, a few Void and Arc Shields, Arc and Strand Surge, Overcharged Fusion Rifle, and Arc Threat. Now, nearly all enemies do arc damage, so I highly advise investing in arc, melee, and sniper resist. For even more damage resist, slap on Risk Runner. Not only does it further reduce incoming arc damage, but it is great for general ad clear. It's not an anti-champion weapon via the artifact this season, but can be made a barrier weapon with Radiant, a great pick for Solar Warlocks. Due to the small number of shields, just focus on build synergy and active surges. What you do need to worry about are the numerous overload champions, so I highly recommend the majority of your fire team having such methods. Perfect for this GM are Jolt and Slow Effects, like that on an Arc subclass with a Spark of Shock Fragment or Chill Clip Fusion Rifle. Now, I believe there are three main trouble spots that will end a run. The first is capturing the Warsat. It's easy to get overwhelmed by all the enemies if you don't know when and how they spawn. Simply put, it's based on the capture percentage. Enemies sort of keep spawning until a set value, which is 33% and 63%, then the current ship leaves. The next wave of adds spawn at 39% and 69%, so ideally everyone leaves a zone in that 6% window. Clear the adds, then hop back in. Oh, and shoot the turrets off the ships. Spot 2 is the room after the lightning tunnel. If you get close to the spawn door, the enemies can get stuck inside. Sometimes they'll walk out or teleport out, other times not. And if you can't kill them, then you can't progress and must restart. So stay away. Spot 3 is the final boss. Comes down to positioning and damage output. You want to use cover to avoid their sniper shot. I like using the staircase on the left. And then you want to output a lot of damage very quickly in their third phase, as they have half their health remaining and will start charging you. So conserve a bulk of your heavy ammo and DPS supers for that final phase. Other than that, watch out for those many snipers, exploder shanks, and rushing marauders, and spec into high resilience. Up next, let's talk about some builds. Now it is my belief that anyone that can access this nightfall, which is everyone, can beat it. For accessibility, we will go over my minimum spec loadouts in this section, using currently obtainable free-to-play gear only. And even though it's free, it doesn't mean it's not good. All these builds are extremely potent. Let's start with exotic weapons. Arbalist is great for those barrier champions, but I think the star of the show is Centrifuge, which is free for everyone this season. Anti-barrier, blinding explosions, jolt via the artifact, and arc subclass synergy. For legendary anti-champion weapons, plenty of options with my top picks being Nightwatch, Crate, and Amit AR2. Like previously stated, I do advise everyone having some sort of overload, via weapon or a subclass verb. For special weapons, a chill clip Riptide will do great for damage, crowd control, and overload stun, but also look to disorienting grenade launchers or one-two punch shotguns for you adventurous types. For heavy weapons, linears are great for ammo efficiency, so look to options like Sail Spy Pitch Glass, Tarantula, or Laser Paint. For more oomph, arc rockets like Hothead and Blowout will do wonders. And if you are having ammo issues, then bring someone with Aeons and Sect of Insight. For some simple loadouts and builds, the theme will be high ability uptime. Starting with Hunters, Void is good for getting you out of danger, especially when overrun on the war set, but I highly advise Arc with ability spam exotics like Shinobu's Vow or Frosties to keep jolting everything. A list of Void build here for those that are having issues controlling groups of adds and capturing the war set, but I recommend you run this Arc build with Shinobu's, Raspberry or Frosties, and then pair that with Riptide, Centrifuge, and an Arc or Strain Linear or Rocket. Titans are up next, and Arc is amazing here. Solid choice of armamentarium to spam grenades back to back, or equip the newly made free to play Heart of Inmost Light to reduce ability cooldowns and increase their damage. If you desire some safety and a damage buff, then Void with Sentinel Shield is fine. For our build, let's rock Arc Thundercrash, pair Riptide with Centrifuge for more Arc explosions, or Arbalist with a scout for high uptime anti champion methods. Lastly, Warlocks. Arc is fantastic with extreme uptime on your abilities with Crown of Tempests, Verity's Brow, and the oodles of arc traces you can generate. But if you want some safety, a Well of Radiance is never a bad call. I like Maximum Destruction, so let's go Chaos Reach with Arc of Tempests and pair that with a Chill Clip Riptide, Centrifuge, and Sail Spy Pitch Glass. 
Now for our veteran players, let's widen our options. We'll go over my maximum spec, which assumes you own all DLCs and all currently obtainable gear. For exotic weapons, Quicksilver Storm is one of the best primaries and makes running Strand even better, but don't overlook the simplicity of Lemon Arc and Divinity for easy debuffs and overload. If you're opting for a heavy ammo spam strat with Aeons and Cenotaph, then Galahorn is great to boost your team's rocket damage and create hordes of Seeking Wolfpack rounds for easy ad clear. As for legendary anti-champion weapons, nothing necessary, just more options. Specials, on the other hand, give you amazing fusions like Techian Force and Iterative Loop for DPS and ad clear, more grenade launcher options, Storm Chaser for a DPS linear, and Circular Logic for an ad clear machine gun. As for notable armor and builds, owning everything means Strand and Stasis are on the table. Both do wonders in this GM, but I wouldn't call them must equips. It just depends on your strategy. Arc subclass is great for just destroying everything. Strand and Stasis are great for halting enemies in their tracks. For our hunters, if you want to get up close and spread jolt, then equip Liar's Handshake or Assassin's Cowl. If you desire safer options, then Six Coyote on Strand or Omni and Gurfalcon on Void. Two builds for you. Strand with Six Coyote with Quicksilver Storm so you can suspend constantly and bully champions, and then an up-close arc build with Liar's Handshake and a 1-2 punch shotgun. Just remember to play smart and talk to your team. It's quite easy to make this build awful if your teammates keep stealing kills. Titans, Arc got better with options like Curus of the Falling Star to double Thundercrash damage, and the revamped Point Contact Cannon Brace to spam melees and jolt the battlefield. If you desire Strand, then equip a Bayant Leap or maybe Hoyle. For you, two builds. Kind of your choice of Exotic on Strand, paired with Quicksilver Storm for Anti-Barrier, Suspension, and Tangles that grant Woven Mail. And then a punchy arc build with Point Contact Cannon Brace and Centreviews for those that like to punch and see electrifying explosions. Now, can't forget our Warlocks. Plenty of top picks really depends on your playstyle and flavor. You can make those Ionic Traces better with Fallen Sunstart, or perhaps Rock Cenotaph Mask with a Trace Rifle to generate heaps of heavy ammo for your team. Two different builds here. For Strand lovers, try Swarmer or Cenotaph to summon an army of minions and really pick a weapon you like. The Navigator, Divinity, and Coldheart pair quite nicely with Cenotaph. For Warlocks that want defense and team play, here's my go-to Solar build. Wall of Radiance, Phoenix Protocol, and Risk Runner. Soak up that arc damage, deal it out, and keep spamming wells and rifts. As a final reminder, if you're using rockets or have ammo issues, bring in Aeons or Cenotaph to help generate some. With that, on to the walkthrough. In the opening section, just spare on through to the Warset. Just avoid all the enemies so you don't explode. When you reach the Warset area, get off and away from your Sparrow and the Warset. Don't want to die from debris, physics, or your Sparrow exploding. Interact with the Warset and stay on site. Whenever a ship loads in, quickly shoot at it to destroy its turrets. Team shooting with primary weapons is fine, using special and heavy just speeds it up. And the turrets are no joke, they will easily one-shot you. Your job is to guard the Warset and fend off the waves of Fallen, a mix of dregs, marauders, vandals, and the occasional champion. To not get overwhelmed and flanked by several ships, you want to stop capturing the Warset at several points. At around 33% progress, the final wave of Fallen with an Overload will spawn from the first ship, and that ship will then leave. You then want to step out of the Warsat capture zone and clear them out. If you stay in, at 39%, the second wave of the two ships will spawn and flank you. Trying to survive two fronts is difficult and completely avoidable. So when everything is dealt with, then step back in and shoot the turrets off the two incoming ships. Same as before, enemies with a barrier champion will keep spawning. At around 63%, they'll stop and the ships will leave. You want to leave the war side again to deal with that wave, because at 69%, the final wave of one ship will spawn. Clear the wave, reactivate the point, shoot the ship's turret, and hold your ground. To make your time easier and enemies despawn quicker, you want to stay on the war set until it is complete. Nuke the overload champion as it drops down and have someone focus the servitor so it doesn't make everything immune. For that final wave, defensive supers like Well and Ward are great to guarantee holding your ground. If you find combat an impossible task, you can bring a perpetual invis hunter build so you can always stay on the zone and not deal with the enemies. For Bunker Room 1, all enter at the same time. If you ever get overwhelmed, you can retreat out this door. There are two main strategies for this room, depending on your builds. For the safest and easiest option, everyone immediately run into the left side tunnels. The only enemies that you'll have to deal with over there are the marauders that keep spawning back there, so watch the spawn door, and the occasional exploder shank and champion coming close. From this position, you can easily peek shoot and throw abilities to destroy the enemies at your own pace. 
The other method is for those that ideally have defensive supers like Well of Radiance and burst ag clear like rockets or grenade spam. The risk is that you are in the open and you can easily get flanked by rushing overload champions and marauders. Whichever option you choose, focus the exploder shanks, watch for the snipers in the back, and try to get rid of one of the champions. After you destroy a combination of enemies, snipers, and the barrier, a second wave will spawn with an additional overload. To not deal with three champions at once, take one out before this. Then clear the room, open the vent, shoot the fuse, and get to cover. You'll then have four exploder shanks, marauders from the side tunnel, two snipers, and two overloads appear at the entrance. Post up on the pillar and stairs on the left side, or rush to that side tunnel again. Focus the normal fallen first, then pick off the two champs and stock up on ammo. The lightning tunnel is easier than it looks. Peek shoot the two snipers guarding the charge and then elect a runner. Everyone else, guard the deposit point. Since carrying the charge makes you slow, to go faster you can increase your mobility, proc arc speed booster before you grab it, or simply walk, slide, repeat. For a straight shot, pick up the charge when the bolt crosses the lane closest. Just don't get too close. If the runner dies, just wait for the adds to despawn, get the revive, then repeat. In room 2, remember you can always retreat out the door to recover. Clear the wave by the door, push to the pillars for cover, and then throw everything you got at the adds and overload on the far side. Be aware of the marauders and overload potentially rushing you though. When the barrier champion spawns, get rid of them quickly so they don't make the current adds and the eventual two overload champions immune. Eventually that final wave of two overloads will spawn, just play it safe. No matter what, do not get close to that spawn door. Doing so can cause the enemies to teleport and get stuck in that room. You can't damage them and they might not come out. If that happens, you must restart the GM. This is your warning. For room 3, to make it easier, try to defeat the barrier champion and some of the snipers before you push up. That way you don't have to track them down amongst the sea of fallen and champions. Then move up, using the left wall as cover. You'll have a horde of Fallen with an Overload Champion, with two more coming down the stairs when the door opens. So head on a swivel, play it safe, and pick them off. This is also the last good opportunity to stock up on heavy ammo, so get them weak and finish them with Aeons and use Cenotaph if you got them. Now be careful as you drop into the boss room. The sloped walls can physics you across the room and get you stuck in geometry. Once down you'll have a couple of Servitors and Shanks, which when defeated will start the boss fight. Cover and electric barriers fluctuate as the encounter progresses, but for static, easy cover I recommend grouping up on the left small staircase and posting up with defensive abilities. The boss has four health segments, with the fight divided into three phases. Phase 1, boss spawns in with their thrusters as their crits. Damage them, but conserve ammo and damage supers. A couple of rockets or a mag from a linear fusion will be enough. Quickly get them to 75% HP for them to go immune and teleport to the back wall. Now focus the encroaching shanks and watch out for the boss's sniper cannon. It can one-shot you, so stay back and use the walls as cover. Take care of the lone barrier champion, and once it and all other adds are destroyed, the next phase starts. Phase 2, boss teleports to the middle and repeats like phase 1. DPS the boss to 50% HP to get them to leave. Then focus the shanks around you. Once the boss goes immune, they switch to their far less lethal Gatling gun, which then makes it safer to run around to avoid enemies and grab ammo. Like before, a barrier champion will spawn in the center, normal and exploder shanks will surround you, and two tracer shanks will come out of the far right ceiling vent. Have someone watch out for when they spawn so you don't get caught off guard. Leave the champ for last, fully stock up on ammo, reload everything, and when you are set, defeat the champion to start the final phase. For phase 3, boss's crit is now their windshield and your task is now to kill the boss from 50% to 0. Once at 25% HP, the boss's hood breaks off and they go berserk, causing them to rush you and spew out an electric AoE. Ideally whittle them down to this breaking point and then throw all your heavy ammo, grenades, and supers at them to quickly end the fight. Do this quickly and you won't have to deal with the spawning exploder shanks. For a little extra protection, a banner shield titan can block and hug the boss to buy your team more time. With this, hopefully you showed that big shank who's boss. This is a great intro to GMs, decent mechanics, combat challenge, short and sweet. Just coordinate with your team and always keep an eye on the warsight progress and spawning enemies. If you have any other questions or loadout recommendations, comment down below. If you found this guide useful, then a like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. And for those wanting to make new friends and dive into Destiny 2's endgame, come join the Sundog Gaming Discord. As always, I am your Commander Pika, be kind, have fun, and I'll see you on the battlefield.